one bachelor. 30 women fighting for his love. To the death. The Bachelor, Hunger Games edition. The bloodiest bachelor yet. But first, questionable material with Jack and Brian. You're listening to Questionable Material, produced in New York by Jack Helmuth and Brian Sack. QMPodcast.com. Um, Space Go. Oh, hi. Uh, I just saw your um, advertisement online on Facebook ad. Yeah. Uh, and it looked like a cool company, but, you know, I actually don't know what it is you even do. Well, we kind of pattern ourselves after SpaceX. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh-huh. Which, of course, is a groundbreaking and innovative company. And they do all sorts of crazy things, don't they? They go up into space. They they carry payloads for various governments. They, they're taking astronauts up there to, to bring them to the International Space Station. And I yeah. thought... I want to do that. And that's why I formed you, Space Go. <laughs> you just thought that you wanted to do the, what's your, you, so you must have a background in what, um, uh, uh, aeronautics or um, some sort of engineering? Not really. It was more, I mean, mm. I, I, I got an associate's degree. I could only commit two oh, years to college. I had plans if you know what I mean. And uh, they involved fly fishing. So I kind of, I wanted to get the educational part done. So technically I'm a registered nurse. (laughs) Okay. What a complex uh, life you seem to have lived. You know, that's what they say. An unexamined life is not worth living. I'm so, I'm surprised someone with your level of education could pull that out of your hat so easily. Well, I've I've read a lot. I I consider myself an autodidact. Oh, oh. Yes. I I know yeah, big words. You know. There's not a lot of and I know a lot of them, you know. I think we all do, but uh, there are many fly fishing nurses who would use words like this. Uh, you know what? That's a lot of my patients say that. And mm-hmm. you know, right before I stick them, you know, I, I say, listen, I'm good with needles. I'm good with hooks. And then I give them a, a knowing wink <laughs> and you kind of, you see the fear in their eyes. And I don't know if it's declining or cu- growing. I, cause I haven't quite figured out the dilated pupils thing, <laughs> but it's more of a doc thing. Probably they, rem- they remember me. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they do. I, I just called this number on a whim and I'm going to always remember you. What, um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, tell me about your patients. What, what's, what's some of the, you know, before, cause I want to really go to space. Um, yep. So let's, we're going to get to that, but sure. real quickly, I just would love to know about some of your patients, what sort of um, uh, sticking you do. Well, you uh, stick them to, to take their blood. You want to get mm-hmm. a blood sample. Mm-hmm. Um, I can do all sorts of, I can, I'll stick you. I'll, I look for a good vein. Hmm, okay. You know, I'm very good at that. I, that. That course was more challenging than I had expected. A lot of people don't have good veins. Oh, okay. A lot of people resent when you keep poking around looking for the good vein. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, they're like a pin cushion. It's not my fault. They they have too much, you know, s- subcutaneous, uh, smushy stuff. That's one of the classes I didn't pay attention in. I, I, I guess so. I, I think obviously in the two years that you studied, you got subcutaneous and then the mushy stuff. I think if you had done the two more years, you would have really nailed the rest. Yeah, I probably should have stuck around. But man, I got some great trout. So have you, um, have you launched anything, uh, successfully yet? What is your, uh, timeline and go uh, and goals for, um, uh, launching into space? Well, uh, we're, we're in the R and D phase, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. research and development. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's a learning process. It's a learning curve. You try different things. You take a lawnmower engine, you drop it off the top of the roof onto a trampoline. Is it going to bounce up and go into space? No. You learn very quickly. You're going to get 12, 15 feet out of it. And then it's going to go sailing off the trampoline, if not through the trampoline. 
As someone who's had uh, several trampolines, I can tell you uh, the best trampoline is Alley Oop brand. <laughs> and go for the Supreme model. That'll actually bounce back your lawnmower engine mm -hmm. and it won't go smashing into the ground. But uh, it won't even make it back to the roof, let alone the stratosphere or into outer space. That's exactly my, my findings. And so that's when I started to say, okay, well, obviously a lawnmower engine is not going to get me into space. Mm -hmm. What else can I do? Well, of course, you got to think uh, big. When you think big, what do you think of? Uh, a, spa a space shuttle. No, oh, I was thinking Luther Vandross. <laughs> Why, why over the course of this conversation would that come into your mind? Because he had said in an interview once that if he hadn't gone into singing, he would have been a truck driver, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a big rig. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, that answers my question really well. Thank yeah. you. So um, this is what you okay. do. So now, you know, on some mountain roads, they have little uh, emergency paths for, for trucks that lose their brakes. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it slows them down, but they're mm -hmm. ramps, they go up. So my thought was, what if you came by in the middle of the night and you just kind of concreted over the gravel and built yourself a ramp? It's already mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And then you get your big rig, mm -hmm. you race down, you don't care about brakes, you're not going to be using them. And then you hit that emergency ramp mm -hmm. and it doesn't slow you down. It launches you. Into space. Into space. Mm -hmm. or Kleinfeld National Forest. <laughs> mm -hmm. So your R&D uh, 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 phase with that saw you take a big rig yep. uh, onto a freshly paved um, uh, ramp yep. off a hillside and crashing down into a forest. Yes. So you did not get close to space? Would, would that be a fair assessment? It depends how you look at it because Benji, the driver, is close to God. And in my estimation, God's up in space. Yeah, that makes sense. So in some ways, he's in heaven. Yeah. I mean, did he live a good life? Not as he was burning to death in the cab of the truck, obviously. That was something I wish I hadn't live streamed. But I thought people would be really excited. And they were, <laughs> but for different reasons. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. I meant, though, for, for Benji, um, I didn't mean, I meant, did he live a good enough life to earn entry into heaven? Was he a good human being? That's a good question. And it's <laughs> one I would ask him. But? But he is an astronaut. <laughs> So, so he, he, so we live streamed the, the burning of, of Benji. Yeah. Yeah. I had four cab cams. <laughs> so you get it from every angle. It's pretty amazing in some ways, like from a cinematography mm -hmm. perspective, it's phenomenal because yeah, most sounds... people have never seen somebody burn to death right in front of them. Uh, yeah. And I find that most people haven't seen that kind of tragedy. And here it is from four different angles in high definition. I didn't go cheap on the cab cams. That's weird that the trampoline uh, lawnmower guy, lawnmower engine guy, uh, decided to to really amp up the spend, ramp up the spending. But no pun intended to Benji's loss on the ramp to ramp up the spending on cameras. Well, th this is what uh, my thinking. So I know Elon Musk is mm -hmm. a genius at, at PR and marketing, and that's kind of where I want to be. So yeah. you got to drum up interest. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. Well, you you live stream your events. Remember watching the SpaceX ship landing on a on a raft in the middle of the ocean and yeah. rocky ways and how dramatic that was. And I thought, well, here they're going to watch Benji go into space. And, and that means more money, you know, more, I, more people wanting to invest in my company, mm -hmm. space go. My plan was people watch the cab cam. They see Benji go into space and they say, this is a company I want to be part of. I'm going to join their GoFundMe. Mm. Oh, Okay. So you're not publicly traded yet. You're more in the GoFundMe phase. I'm in the GoFundMe phase. You know, we're okay. working up to an IPO mm -hmm. Mm. and I hope to be publicly traded. I'd like the st stock symbol SGO for Space Go. Mm -hmm. I just hope it hasn't been taken. Yeah. Probably pretty easy to find that out. 
I, you tell me. <laughs> I guess, I guess in my, I learned that in my third year of college. So you probably didn't get to that. Yeah. That's the problem. You know what? I really should have stuck with it for two more years. You sound like the type of guy I want to be in business with. Can I give you my, um, do you take discover card? I am actually, it's the only card I take. And that's so weird. <laughs> It's the only company that would actually work with Spaceco. It, it all makes sense now. Amex, Visa, they all laughed at me. MasterCard said, please don't call us again. But Discover was like, yes, please. They sent a guy to my house. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> what was his name? Benji. <laughs> so, Brian... Last week, we passed April 15th, the traditional time when taxes are due. Yep. And of course, this year, they're not due for another month, not until May 15th this year, because of all the extenuating circumstances from COVID. That's correct. You know, and, and I know you're a, a bit of a, a, you know, a tax aficionado and, and know sort of all the loopholes and stuff. And I, yeah, specifically, I know you do a lot of um, work sort of focusing on charities. Mm hmm what charities uh, the government will accept in terms of, uh, you know, f as a write-off for donations. And so I have a list here of different charities. And mm -hmm. since I know you know all about these things, and, and this could be something, this is a more of a public service for our listeners. Mm -hmm. You know, it may, it may not be that entertaining, but I know this is really going to help people. If you could just sort of go through some of these charities and, and let people know uh, what they do and, uh, you know, see, uh, you know, find out where people want to be putting their money and if they're going to be able to be written off. Absolutely. I'd love to help yeah. people. I love when people are able to deduct things because they, you know, I, I prefer you keep your paycheck and not have the government come in and, and you know, chisel out its portion, especially yeah. when it goes to Maxine Waters. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. So, so I have a list of official, what appear to be official charities here. And let's just um, find out, you know, about them right now. Mm. So the first charity here on my list, thanks for doing this, by the way, Brian, really awesome. Um, is just uh, something called the Spay and Neuter Foundation. Yes. So th uh, that's that's interesting because normally that would be, normally uh, animals are spayed and neutered at different animal charities that there would be a full foundation just for this. Seems puzzling. What can you tell us about it? Yes. Well, uh, the Spay and Neuter Foundation is a 501c3 charity. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which means you can deduct it when you uh, donate to them. And uh, what they do is they they spay and neuter pets uh, for, you know, to prevent basically more animals from winding up in shelters. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And it was created, uh, by a uh, Stephen Perkins, hmm. who is the twin brother of Reginald Perkins. Now, okay. Reginald Perkins owns animal shelters and his brother hates him. So he created the Spay and Neuter Foundation so that the shelters would be empty. <laughs> he wants his brother bankrupt. Loathes him. Ooh. And so he created this foundation that basically uh, will spay or neuter anything you bring into the, its, its offices. <laughs> okay, that, that's an interesting statement. Yeah. They will spay and neuter anything you bring in. Yeah, which was a huge problem during Take Your Daughter to Work Day. <laughs> I, that seems like it was a... a that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Well, it's a, a lawsuit you like you couldn't believe and you can't really deduct that. <laughs> Boy, it's, well, that's, see, that's what happens when your charity is really all about um, uh, destroying others. What, it, it was a vengeful charity. Yeah. You know, it was created out of vengeance and, and hatred. Uh, here's another charity I'd love to ask you about. Everyone knows the Big Brothers. Yes. But now here's a charity. It's just called the Little Brothers. Yes. Uh, what, what's the, you know, what's the differentiation between those two different um, organizations? Uh, the Little Brothers was founded by uh, Gary Coleman. <laughs> and it's basically an organization, a support group for uh -huh. short black men. <laughs> oh, Little Brothers. Yes. <laughs> mm, so it not, I see. Yeah. I was thinking more in the sort of brotherhood or sister brother. I see. Yeah. No, it was, it's for short black men. And, and, uh, you know, there were some famous members, uh, uh, Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern show, of course, is a regular. Mm -hmm. And it was a support group because it's tough to be a short black man. 
Yeah. It's basically to provide support. They get together in a, in a very small room, usually in, in, uh, you know, at a popular restaurant in town and, and they'll just talk about their experiences, you know, with their, mm-hmm. their trials and tribulations, getting work or you know, dating or things like that. And I mean, they all agree that it's really cool when you fly because you have tons of leg room. Yeah. But, you know, there are other things that aren't fun about it. Like what? What's, what's one of the prime things that, that aren't fun about it? Well, you know, it's uh, uh, being a short black man. I mean, you're doubly marginalized mm-hmm. or at least mm-hmm. you're told you are. Yeah. And so it can just be difficult. And so um, these people need support. Uh, but not too much. They're very light. <laughs> but this was a this was a way of you know this is how Gary Coleman really wanted to help help other people because he he'd seen great success. Yeah, of course. And he he said, "Listen, um, I want to help people out." And then he formed the charity, and then and then he lost all his money, <laughs> and and he asked the charity if he could have just some, and they said, "Actually, yeah. that's against the rules of charitable giving. We'd we'd lose our five hundred one c three status." And uh, and he lived happily ever after. Well, you're right. I forgot. So that's something for people to think about. The yep. Little Brothers Association. Here's one that I wanted to ask you about. It's the Hey Jude's Beatles Research Hospital. Yes. T- tell us about, you know, because I love, uh, you know, charities that, that help children. I don't know if that's, this is one of them, but can you tell us about the Hey Jude's Beatles Research Hospital? Yeah. Well, Hey Jude's is a, it's a, one of the premier cancer research hospitals oh, uh, for, uh-huh. for pediatric cancer. Yeah. And uh, what they do is they have a, a Fab Four, a band that goes mm. around and, and serenades you. And, um, you know, they, 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 they portray the different Beatles characters, John, Paul, George, and the drummer. And, uh, and what they do is they'll sing songs, but they're, they're classic Beatles songs, mm-hmm. except the, they've changed the lyrics a little bit. So they're all about pediatric cancer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a challenging thing that must be. Um, I mean, certainly you must know some examples. Uh, yes. Um, Lucy in the Sky with Cancer. <laughs> it's been a hard day's night because I have cancer. <laughs> Help. I have cancer. Yesterday, I did not have cancer. <laughs> Uh-huh. Wow. Um, Eleanor Rigby has cancer. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's ain't exactly weird Al Yankovic uh, cleverly changing the words. They just sort of seem to tack on has cancer to all the Beatles songs. Pretty much. And, uh, it's, it, okay. you know, it's kind of fascinating because the idea is, and it's unbeknownst to the musicians, uh, it's to make people the patients feel better about themselves knowing that they're not in this half-ass Beatles band singing songs about cancer. So the idea is to humiliate the band so badly yes. that the kids pity them and feel better about themselves. Yes. So the kids are there in the, in the hospital and they're looking at these idiots who are fake Beatles with crappy songs, maybe not so good on guitar. And um, they, they feel much better about themselves. And in some cases, kids have gone into full remission (laughs) because the white blood cells are like, yeah, I'm with you, dude. And they just, it's amazing. Wow. Wow. Well, my gosh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, they're getting, I'm sending them a check. 501c3. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to write that one off. And I'm, I'm also just happy to give a little bit. Yeah. It's nice to give, except when you're in the checkout line. I'm not a big fan of being asked if I want to donate to a charity when I'm trying to check out at PetSmart. Oh, yes. Would you like to round up? Yeah. It's, no, I'll, I'll take yeah. care of that on my own. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, that's a good point. There are just a couple uh, others that I would like to ask you about and then we can move on. Sure. So it's called Doctors Without Barnes and Nobles. Yes. What's the charity element here? What am I missing? Doctors without Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> um, it's a charity for doctors opposed to farming and royalty. So without Barnes and without Nobles. Exactly. They don't believe in farming. They don't believe in any kind of monarchy or nobility system. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they are, have degrees in medicine. I see. 
Let me ask you about this. Uh, it's the called the the Boys and Girls Club of Libya. Yes. Uh, interesting uh, that uh, that would be a, a charity that you could write off here in America. Um, I guess they must do really good work. What what sort of work do the Boys and Girls Club of Libya do? Um, well, I mean, it's it's a way for you can sponsor a, bo- a, a Libyan youth. Mm, mm-hmm. And um, and for a small amount of money, you can um, pay for them to have them come here mm-hmm. and work for you in perpetuity. A lot of people have equated it with modern day slavery. Uh huh. But uh, the way the Boys and Girls Club of Libya looks at it is, is it's a way, it's a travel experience for them. Mm-hmm. It gets them away from a, a home that can be a, a rather scary place. Of course. And, and brings them to a home that is, is quite nice. They just have to constantly maintain it. So the, it teaches responsibility by showing the kids that they need to work to maintain my home. Yeah. Te- responsibility. Uh, gratefulness is another one that that's a mm-hmm. recurring theme. You should be grateful that you're here. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not quite happy with what you did on the marble stairs. I, are there concerns, um, uh, you know, that there would be a Sally Hemings type of situation with a charity like that? Like an underground railroad? <laughs> I, I think she was more of a, 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 a oh, oh, concubine oh, right, for that's right. uh, Thomas Jefferson. And that's that, right. Instead of, I'm glad you know your history. Uh, you, you also only finished two years of college. That's right. Uh, you know, we've done a, a few times lately. We've, um, we've taken a little bit of a turn into music and really leaned on your incredible encyclopedic knowledge of, uh, the music industry of, of, um, of artists at Rolling Stone regularly comes to you just to sort of like, Hey, we have a question about music and mm-hmm. you'll just answer for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a, a, an incredible gift that you have. And, and I thought now would be another fun time to sort of share some of that uh, knowledge with our listeners. You, you, you down for a little of this? I am. In fact, uh, my friends call me Sackopedia. All right. Well, that, that tracks, that makes sense to me. So what we've done in the past, um, we've gone through tracks of, um, uh, you know, the, of the most recent albums of, uh, of famous, yep. um, uh, singers and, yep. and sort of gone through them. The first time we did Paul McCartney and then we did Tony Bennett. Yes. And now we're going to do the album escape the posthumous album, uh, of singer songwriter, Michael Jackson. Oh. which was composed of previous unreleased tracks that were recorded between 1980 and 1999. That's right. Escape. Yeah. Escape. So I'm, you know, I mean, let, let's just get right into some of these singles and, and I want you to, you know, I'm going to tell you some of the singles that are actually on this album mm-hmm. and, you know, just tell us what some of the songs are about. Sure. You know, I, we're, it's just so exciting to hear, you know, why, you know, sometimes we know a song, sometimes we don't. And it's really interesting to find out what the song is about, why they, why it was written, Yep. you know, what they were thinking. Yeah, great. So um, uh, right here, track number one, Love Never Felt So Good by um, Michael Jackson and, and Paul Anka wrote yeah. this song together. Yes. I'd love to, to know uh, why, uh, about the song Love Never Felt So Good. Yeah, well, uh, that, that song was written uh, shortly after uh, he had uh, met uh, Kurt Cobain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And Kurt Cobain's wife, uh, Courtney Love. Mm -hmm. And she had been in a weird phase. She had kind of given up on the drugs and the booze and she had been going to yoga Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and the gym religiously Mm -hmm. and her, you could, you could, her, her body was tight as they say in the yoga business. (laughs) And, and Michael, Michael got a little tipsy as we, he did, as would happen because he had two drinks. And, <laughs> uh, and so he was all over her and, mm-hmm. and then came back and, and immediately with Paul Anka, who lived next door to Michael in Neverland, Ra- Neverland Ranch, mm-hmm. uh, Paul Anka had, um, he, his place was called Jurassic Ranch. <laughs> he has a dinosaur fetish. It was a fun neighborhood. Everybody had a different ranch. Wow, that's crazy. So they they composed this song and uh, love never felt so good. And is and it's really the the song really focuses on on the, the tightness and toneness of Courtney Love's skin, which has since given way to to ravaging drug and alcohol abuse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But at the time, uh, it, it was fantastic, and it obviously left an impression in Michael. I, I guess so. My gosh. Um, 
I, I've got to ask you real quick about the neighborhood. What, what are some of the other ranch? Doesn't El- Elton John have a ranch uh, in that neighborhood? Yes. What was what's his ranch called? A Boy Town Ranch. And it's oh, funny. That's interesting. There's a water slide at Neverland mm-hmm. that actually kind of slides by Elton John's, and it you know, and every once in a while we'll just dump whoever's passing by into Elton's pool. I bet. I bet there's some some folks. <laughs> Who started down that slide who never made it back. Yeah. Wow. Boy, the things you learn. This is why we do this segment. It's so much knowledge. I love sharing knowledge with people. It's really neat. Yeah, it's great. Um, okay. Well, thanks, Brian. Um, oh, okay, Here, here's an interesting one. Um, oh, I'm curious about this one. Track number four, mm-hmm. A Place With No Name. Ooh. Yes. That's so interesting. Tell us about the Michael Jackson song, A Place With No Name. Uh, It's actually a song about a dinner party. Really? Yeah. So dinner parties, I don't know, traditionally, you know, people will have little cards at the uh, the head of the plate to let you know who sits where. And Michael came to- Yeah, a little fancy dinner party. Yeah. yeah. And Michael came to this dinner party and and there was a card missing from one of the table settings. Mm -hmm. And he went, ha ha. And then he just kind of staggered back. And, and created a song uh, about this poor table setting that had no name. It's a place with no name. Oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, it's a very sad song. I, I guess so. So o- overcome by the mystery and the sadness of it all, he staggers backwards and bolts the dinner party. He leaves the dinner party. And, and he just goes right home and writes the song. He's, as he was driving home, he's just thinking this about the sadness of this table setting that that you know, looks around and sees all these other table settings with names and he doesn't have a table setting name and, and he's just, he's crushed for as far as table settings go and just would cry if he had tear ducts. Here's one I wanted to ask you about, Brian. Um, uh, track number six on the escape album for Michael Jackson is, uh, do you know where your children are? Yes. Uh, interesting. Um, please tell us about uh, track number six. Well, that's actually the only track on the album. That's not a song. It's just him genuinely trying to make new friends. Okay. And it's basically him pleading with parents. Uh, do you know where your children are? Do, do they have my number? Do you need my number? Can you have them call me? Mm-hmm. This is my, somebody will always answer day or night. Don't be afraid to call. You, mm-hmm. you know, even if you wake me up, I'll never be mad at you. Right. And it's kind of a sad song in a way, because it makes him seem a little off. Yeah. But, um, but it's a nice break from all the music because there's so much music on the, on the that seems, album. Yeah. So, the, so, so many uh, albums I find uh, are just sort of overloaded with music. And sometimes you just need a break. You want somebody just pleading with you. Yeah. So, Although the, this track sort of feels more to me like it should be on, um, on the album Evidence. And it would have been if he had lived a little longer. Yeah. Gee whiz. Well, um, okay. Interesting. This is so cool to know. The final song Mm -hmm. that I want to ask you about um, is uh, Escape, which I guess is what they they named the album after. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is the eighth track on 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 the record, and it's called Escape. And I would love to know what, um, what escape means. Yeah, no, it's about um, a relationship that falls apart. Oh. So, and Michael, in the video, Michael's in love with Dracula. And, <laughs> and then they break up and Mike, he's despondent. And then he opens up his closet and there's Dracula's cape in his closet, his ex cape. <laughs> and, you know, and it, and it triggers this whole memory of, of them together, him, Michael and Dracula. You okay? And they're, all right. Yeah. And they're I'm walk, sorry. walking on the beach, you know, hand in hand, but at night, of course, because if we're daytime, he burst into flames. Um, and it's just like sad, sad story about, but about Michael and Dracula. It's his ex cape. Yeah, no, I got that. It, it, <laughs> his former cape. His former, his, his former, his former lover's, lover's cape. Form, yeah. 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 yeah I, I think, I mean, it's, it's relatable. It's weird. It's relatable though. You know, I think we've all had a lover leave our lives and maybe they've left something behind. Yep. It's a, it's a lament. It's like, I'm, you know, 
I miss you so much. I miss you like heck. I wish you were here to suck on my neck. <laughs> hee hee. That's how he does it. That's definitely how he, he did it. Did it. You're right. Past tense. Sorry. Yeah. That's no, okay. Uh, <laughs> now I see why Rolling Stone calls you, Brian. This is great. Yes. I love when Rolling Stone calls me. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for sharing with our listeners. Thank you for sh- sharing me with your listeners. These are our listeners, Brian. You don't understand how this works. It's Welcome. been a year and a half. I need you to I need you to focus. Welcome, everybody. No, no. Jack. Yes, Brian. We have potential sponsors. Yes. Yes. That's great news. Yep. And okay, uh, they want you to read the copy. They don't like my read. They want your read. Mm-hmm. It's more yeah. what they're looking for. Yeah, every like- man, I think. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, but the only thing is you, you got to read the copy cold as they say in the advertising business. Uh, and you just got to be serious. I mean, it's just, you know, this is a sponsor. They want you to take their products seriously. Okay. Well, they're giving us money in exchange. So well, I, I need to be professional. I get it. That's the thing. They're not giving us money if, uh, mm-hmm. if you don't do a proper read. Okay. Just okay. so you know. That's fine. I'm uh, a professional. It's not a thing. Okay, pro. I'm sending you the first uh, script. Okay, and I've never read these, so no, I'm, you I'm haven't. very excited. And it's it's better to just read it cold. You don't need to look at it. You just get it out okay. there. And just remember, it's important, serious, take, take, you know, give these people what they deserve for their money. Okay. Or we don't get uh, I just got it. Okay. Okay, great. I've, I've opened it up and I'm ready. You tell me when. Please go for it. Okay. Hi, I'm Jack Helmuth, co-host of Questionable Material with Jack and Brian. When I heard that Planned Parenthood wanted to sponsor our podcast, I was absolutely thrilled for as long as I can remember. I've been using Planned Parenthood to handle all my unwanted pregnancies. Their fetus removal specialists are second to none, dispatching my unwanted future helmets with the speed and efficiency of a vaginal SEAL Team 6. If it weren't for Planned Parenthood, I'd be a grandfather many times over. And the idea of being called Grandpa Jack fills me with Hitlerian rage. Thanks to Planned Parenthood, which I affectionately called the PP place, I have only two beautiful children, and not a day goes by that I don't remind them of that fact. Right now, questionable material listeners can get 30% off unwanted pregnancies by signing up at www.plannedparenthood.org slash abortionfest2021 slash questionable material with Jack and Brian. Well... Yeah, you can't you can't treat potential sponsors like they're a joke, Jack. That's vaginal seal team six. I, I mean, you know, how am I supposed to You know, they they write the copy, they have ad agencies doing this stuff, professional copywriters. And um, all right, well that's disappointing. That's okay. I guess is, we're so not going to be I'm sponsored sorry. by Planned Parenthood. That's okay. Well, that's that's good. I don't I'm not sure, you know, there there's some uh, listeners that we have who wouldn't like that. So that I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, we're going to get the money from these next two sponsors. So it yeah. doesn't matter. Here's another sponsor, potential right. sponsor. So just give it a good read, okay? Remember, okay. keep it serious. I I will. I I will. Please do. What So the the agent wanted me to do it, not you, huh? I'm that's more right. every man. You're more of an every man. Not just, I'm much more polished. Brig. I'm more polished and professional sounding. They said they wanted somebody who sounded like the average guy who stumbles off of a bus. Okay, cool, cool, man. Okay, I'm I'm ready to record. Please do. I got the, I got it. I've opened. Oh, okay, go. <clears throat> Questionable material with Jack and Brian is brought to you by Happy Good Luck Spa, located on Spring Street, above the store that sells bongs and synthetic marijuana that makes homeless people eat their face. Happy Good Luck Spa specializes in traditional Chinese Qigong and Tui Na massage, as well as the kind of massage where if you ask politely and tip accordingly, the middle-aged lady from Xi'an province rolls her eyes and touches your yang until it explodes like fireworks on the lunar holiday. But for the most part, we just prefer the Qigong and Tui Na massage styles, where we do traditional Chinese things to your muscles, like rubbing them and shouting at them and making them behave under threat of government punishment. Happy Good Luck Spa has a special offer for listeners of Questionable Material with Jack and Brian. Use code QMPODCAST and we will have Hong Feng crawl on your back and dig his elbows into your shoulder blades. You will scream with delight and maybe pain as he takes out his rage on your muscles, white devil. 
Happy Good Luck Spa, open from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. Okay. I would have to hear back. Did I do, I, sometimes yeah. I'm so in the zone of being a professional reader that I did, there, how was that? It was not perfect. And uh, I'm afraid mm -hmm. we will have lost them as a sponsor. <laughs> uh, you know what? Three times the charm is, is what they say, don't they? Um, okay. Well, uh, this yeah. is the third potential sponsor. So please okay. just, you know, do your best professional straight. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Coming your hey, way. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Can I, can I just read it ahead of time? So you I don't, cannot, I, I really want this money. You cannot. I want this money. We're on video. I'm not even going to edit this. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> okay. Forgot about that. We got the camera working. Okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right. I just opened it. I'm ready to go. Please do. Questionable material with Jack and Brian is brought to you by Eric Deerdorf, the Upper Valley's preeminent broker of Pokemon and Magic the Gathering cards. If you're looking for Pokemon or Magic the Gathering cards, look no further than Eric Deerdorf. He has one of the largest collections in the entire United States and he's more than happy to trade them. Day or night, Eric offers a special discount for customers who wear sweatpants or basketball shorts. Eric is always willing to make a deal and no request is too outlandish. He'll wear a diaper if he has to, and you can lead him around by a leash. Whatever it takes to be the preeminent broker of Magic the Gathering cards in the Upper Valley. Only Eric Deardorff is the Pokemon and Magic the Gathering dealer willing to go the extra mile in his car, on foot, in the bushes behind the rest area close to, the, to, in the bushes behind the rest area close to exit seven. Whatever it takes. Use promo code QM podcast and Eric will show you his Thassa God of the C card while dressed as a heavyset middle-aged Beyonce. <laughs> ah, come on. All right. Well, you know, there are lots you're, of sponsors. You're disappointed. You're yeah, disappointed. I'm, I am disappointed. I would like, I would like to, to get some sponsor money. And um, I mean, you're the biggest obstacle to that happening. I'm sorry. It's these ridiculous rules. All right. Well, all right, I'm sorry I blew it, buddy. It's okay. There's always next time. There's lots of sponsors in the sea. That's what my grandmother used to say. What did your grandmother do? She drowned. <laughs> That was Questionable Material with Jack and Brian. Follow the podcast to get every episode. Our website is qmpodcast.com. Our email is contact at qmpodcast.com. 